putting in work. Putting in work. Yeah. Putting in work. Thank God for the favor when the money come yeah. Half for the time, tax fees, and sufficient funds What I gotta do to get it here I'm on a song, what I gotta do to get it Welcome to the Modest Sports Show, home of your college athlete Today, today we got, we got a very special guest Like, I think this is, you are a centerpiece A foundational piece to the top program in the nation So we got Justin Woodall <laughs> appreciate that bro i appreciate you for coming on the show um man so like i was able to learn a lot about you doing my research so before we dive into you though top five players in alabama football history go mark engel okay oh golly julio jones okay Derek Thomas. Okay. What's that? Three? Three. Golly. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Golly, that's hard. So we got Julio, Mark, and Derek, Derek Thomas. Thomas. Gotta throw Derek Henry in there. Okay, that's four. Mm. Golly, man. You gotta throw Joe Namath in there. Joe Namath? Ah. Yeah. Hey, I know him in there, man. I knew this was I knew that was gonna be hard though. It's so many, so many, man. So, bro, um Lafayette High School, Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah. I did not know you were from Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah, small so, town. Talk talk to me. What was your early what was the early, your early upbringing, you know, living in Oxford? What was life like there? Well, shoot, for us, man, it was, you know what I'm saying, play ball. Play ball, play ball. Cause it wasn't a, it wasn't a lot to do, you know what I'm saying in Oxford, Mississippi. So me, I really kept busy playing sports. So I okay. played all sports. Yeah. Uh, really growing up, I played, I played soccer. Oh. Um, yep. Yeah, I did gymnastics. Wow. You know what I'm saying. My mama kept me in a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, cause I had a lot of energy. Okay. You know what I'm saying. I was real hyper, so she kept me in a, in a lot of stuff. So right. from basketball to baseball. I ain't started football for real till seventh grade. Wow. Um, I played because we didn't have pop one. Okay. So all we had was flag. So okay. I probably started flag when I was like 12. Okay. So football grew on me a little late. Wow. Baseball was my thing. Yeah. Because I started baseball when I was like four. Okay. Five. Right. And I always feel like that was my, my best sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I kind of started to love basketball too. And um, I almost quit um, a lot of bas- uh, baseball and football mm-hmm. to play base- uh, basketball because mm-hmm. I fell in love with it. Okay. But um, ended up falling in love with football because I got onto it so late. Right, right. And uh, it kind of like took over. Okay. So like, um, if, can you, I guess, compare Oxford, Mystic? Because I've never been to Oxford. As far as Mystic that I've been, it's probably like, I don't see obviously Starkville now, but uh, I don't been to like Jackson before. I yeah. Think. Um, but like, what is what is Oxford like? You could compare it to a city like in Alabama. Well, you could Tuscaloosa a little, Tus- a little, a little, a little bigger. Okay. Got a little more, got a little more going on. Yeah. But you know, you got Ole Miss there, so it's a college yeah. town. So it's just I could say Tuscaloosa. Yeah. But it's just it's smaller. You know okay. what I'm saying? A, a, a bit smaller. But I would say something like 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 Tuscaloosa. Okay. Um, all right. So <clears throat> that's actually interesting. That's interesting. you did gymnastics and soccer. That's kind of that's yeah. like impressive. <laughs> yeah. But uh, okay. So you get we get to high school, right? High school uh, football in the early two thousands. I imagine had a, a very different feel than what we see today. Yeah. What was high school foot, football like for you at Lafayette High School? Well, I I had a great experience though. We were we was always good, and I had a I had a really good coach, okay. uh, Scott Simpson. Okay. And uh, Coach uh, Harden came my my uh, my senior year, but Coach Simpson he instilled a lot of you know what I'm saying discipline, you know what I'm saying, and uh, really showing you, you know what I'm saying, how to approach the game, you know okay. what I'm saying, with with practice habits, and he he demanded. 
the most out of you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He was real, with, when it come to discipline, he was yeah. all about it, right, right, right. working hard, you know what I'm saying? And introduced me to the weights and all that stuff. Okay. Cause um, he was, he he is the one that really got me to Bama. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he was a real good guy, and uh, we had I, we had we had really good players. Like a lot of players, shoot, we had a couple guys. They could have went to Bama with me. Right, right. But you know, sometimes when you back back at the crib, like yeah. some kids that had a, some yeah. of the guys that had a grades, yeah, and uh, some of the guys in the streets, yeah, you know what I'm saying, but. They kept me out of it, yeah. and I got a chance to, you know, go play at University yeah. of Alabama. And um, like my cousin and all them, they were just as good as I was. You okay, know but uh, I, I I made it I made it out. Yeah. You know? So when you were when you were in high school, right? Like, <clears throat> because what's interesting to me, I'm kind of jealous of you in a sense, right? Yeah. And this is what I mean when I say that. Like you got, we almost got like similar builds. Yeah. I want to play in the backfield too, but they always want to hug me to the line of scrimmage, playing right. edge, or you know. So in high school, like who was it that maybe seen something to you? I'm not quite sure, like what your measurables were then. Yeah. But who seen to like, okay, this safety position? That's like where you stand out at. Um. Well, really, Coach Coach Sampson and another coach uh, named Coach Murphy. Okay. And um, but Coach Sampson was uh, hit. He could tell how I could move okay. with the size I was. Yeah. But but I didn't play safety until my senior year. I was always wow. a cornerback. Okay. Wow. So I played corner and receiver because my cut I could throw the ball too because I, I pitched in baseball. I threw yeah, real yeah. hard. Yeah. But my cousin was the quarterback, but he had a better, you know, he was more accurate and he okay. had just as strong as all okay. as I did. So Coach Simpson, with my athleticism, he decided to put me at receiver and play cornerback. I was okay. a big cornerback. I was a two hundred pound cornerback. Yeah. And um, my senior year, I moved to safety because I had 17 interceptions my junior year. Oh, kind of, wow. I tied the uh, record with Steve McNair and Terrell Buckley wow. in Mississippi. So we still, we still got the record. I wow. think. So uh, my senior year, would not nobody throw at me? So my coach decided to move me yeah, in yeah, safety yeah. so yeah. I could roam around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's 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 amazing, actually. When so you setting records and stuff. When does it? When when does I guess like the offers start come knocking. What does recruiting even look like back then? To tell you the truth, me I really didn't go on too many visits. Um, I want to say my junior, the start of my junior year, I really saw like okay, I can go to college and play this game. Like my ninth okay. and tenth, I was I was playing, but I wasn't thinking about about college. But yeah, then when I got all those interceptions, that's when yeah. everybody start you know what I'm saying start coming in. Like the Bamas, the Ole Misses, the Tennessees. Okay. And, you know, and when um when I when I realized that, that's when I started, you know, pick my, my work ethic up a little bit. But I was still it, it still was a thing because I was so good at baseball mm -hmm. and I used to have scouts at the game mm -hmm. all the time. So it was still a, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. tug yeah. of what right. are you gonna do? Uh -huh. Is he gonna go play <laughs> baseball yeah. or is he gonna go to college and play yeah. football, but football had took over so much and I had yeah. played baseball so long. You kind of I was kind of burnt. Yeah. Kind of burnt. So yeah. Alabama, when I went to Alabama for a visit, mm -hmm. I didn't go but two visits. Yeah. I went to Alabama and Ole Miss. Okay. Ole Miss was in my yeah, yeah, yeah. in my backyard. But when I went to Bama it was it was a done deal. Really? So, yeah. I went on my first visit, I was like, yeah, I'm finna go ahead and yeah. commit. So when okay, cause and I, I empathize with that uh Cause I played baseball the large part yeah. of my life too. Baseball was like my first sport as well. Um, I was a catcher. I was a catcher and center fielder, and so like I get that. Like where I get, I don't know what it is about baseball. But it's like you play it so much, tournaments going here, yeah. going there. It's like at some point you do kind of feel burnt out. So I feel that. But okay, how is it? How is it? You you mentioned the visit, going on a visit, but how is it that you? How does Alabama pull you? From the crib, oh man! Like, what did you see in Tuscaloosa? Be like, nah, this the one. Man, the atmosphere, man, and, really? I, and I had Shula my first. Shula recruited yeah. me, so yeah. I had Cosabin three years, but I only had right. Shula one year. Right. And the atmosphere out there, like the love of football, like I had never seen before. Like, okay, people, it, it, they are crazy about <laughs> football in Tuscaloosa, yeah. 
Yep. And shoot, when I went on the visit, shoot, they treated me like I was probably the number one player uh-huh. in, the, in the country. And I, yeah. I wasn't uh-huh. by far, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But that, that energy kind of, um, that energy I took in, man, and I felt like I was at home. And I also had a, um, a player that played, that was older than me, that played at my high school, Jeffrey Dukes. He, okay. um, he played at Alabama. He okay. he left from JUCO Northwest, okay. and he went to Alabama. So he kind of had a hand in it too, because okay. I had a familiar face right, there. Right, right. But um, yeah, that atmosphere down there and the love for football, man. How they love football down there, man. It was it was it was different. Yeah, so I like I never seen it. Even though I'm in Ole Miss backyard, but yeah. football it wasn't like like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was a whole yeah. other atmosphere. And I still I like because and uh, I'm glad you introduced that too, though. Uh, when you first got there, Coach Saban wasn't there. No, I think that's an interesting tidbit. What was – so your first year you have – you record six tackles, one PBU, one block plant. Um, but, you know, how did you – what was your transition going into college, like the speed of the game? What was college life like, you know, being out on – being an independent young man? Well, just to be straight up um... – the game it was it was so fast, but I don't think it was the speed of the game that that got me. Like my freshman year, I think I was just shell shocked, like on like the playbook and okay. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Like no disrespect to my coaches in high school or nothing like that, but shoot, we ran cover three. Mm-hmm. Like that you is, get to yeah. college, man, it's it's different. Yeah, you know sure. with yeah. the with plays and how many plays you're running. And stuff like that, and then when it got with Coach Saban, it became even harder. Yeah, um, his um, his um, hit. Okay. I had to uh, but uh, his his philosophy when it come to defense was a uh, was way more complicated. You know, our playbook looked like the Bible. Yeah, and sentences for play calls uh-huh. and checks with every motion and. Yeah. That took me, even though I I started my junior and senior year, it still took me like two years to really just learn that defense yeah. straight out. Yeah. You know, but uh yeah, the the concepts what really mm-hmm. really got me coming in because I was yeah. I was I was I was I was dumbfounded to it. Right, right, right. I, I never ran ran that that many defenses and yeah. did all that. So that was and then especially playing the safety position too. Yeah, I imagine, so, like, yeah, playing safety, we the quarterback. Yeah. So we gotta make all the calls, me us and the middle linebacker mm-hmm. gotta make all the checks. We mm-hmm. gotta relay the message yeah. to the corners, you know, to the linebackers yeah. and all that. So yeah. you had to co- really communicate, especially with Coach Saban. Oh yeah. Yeah, you ain't communicating, you're not playing. So <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, you're not playing. So. You're right. Uh, so you, and so I have a, I got a love for Alabama just because like straight out of high school, I went to, um, a prep school at the time in, um, Tuscaloosa. And so like, I got there, I graduated high school. I was class of 18. Uh, so I got there like fall of 18. I was saying at the grand, it's like right off 69. Yeah. And so, um, I had never, like my first time going to a Bama game was probably 2017 of my senior year. And I went, um, it was, you know, Calvin Ridley was there, uh, Jalen, you know, all those guys yeah. too. But when I got there, fall of 2018, um, you know, similar look, similar feel, but I was I was more ingratiated with Tuscaloosa because I was actually there. Yeah. And so like as a young dude, being able to be on campus, being able to see the stadium, see the dudes, how they get, you know, how, you know, how people react to them. That made my love. And and that's why I even do this now. Like, that's why I'm so deep into the game because I'll never forget that feeling me being young. And so when I'm there and I'm seeing these dudes, like, I'm like, wow, like this is, is like, I don't think it's another place in the country that, that, you know, is Alabama football. And so like, what was, but this was at this time, Saban been there, 10 years, you know, yeah. 15, whatever. So, but at, at, I just want to, I just want to know, like, how was Alabama? I know you said it was crazy. How was it pre-saving? And then post-saving, I'm sure it just really shot through the roof. You mean pre-saving when it was, like, uh, yeah, before, with before, Shula? Yeah, with Shula. Like, I know you said they were crazy, but like, I guess, what was the energy like? Uh, Well, I would say with Shula, it was, 
it it was crazy, but when Coach Saban came in, man, yeah, it was a whole new <laughs> it was a whole new energy. Uh huh. Cause shoot, he was yeah. Coach Saban. All right. You know what I'm saying? And um, he demanded a lot. I, like I can remember, like when he walked off the off the plane. Okay. I knew it was finna be different. Okay. Like, it's like he had a halo over his head. Like wow, bro, we finna we finna we finna yeah. change the game. Yeah. Like when I heard his speech uh-huh. and all that. I said, it's going to be different. And then our yeah. first spring game with him, it was a hundred, I'll probably a hundred thousand in the mm-hmm. stadium. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that, I'm like, well, it's just a practice game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was, it was packed. It was loud. Yeah. I'm talking about it was a lot of energy. I was like, yeah, it's going to yeah. change around here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even though we had won mm-hmm. multiple championships right, right. before he came, but that was back yeah. then. And then 92. Yeah. But, we knew we were finna start it back again. Okay. You know, when he got there. Did you feel like your status as a player kind of like just, whew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I feel I feel like that. Like anytime you able to start on a on an Alabama football team, I think your your status of, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, go up. Like yeah. I wasn't a I wasn't a starter team, but right, right. I did I did my job. I did enough. You know what I'm saying? I got a chance at the NFL, yeah. you know. And when you got your Julios and your Mark Ingrams mm-hmm. and your Kareem Jacksons and your Mark Barons and your Terrence Cody's yeah. and uh, your Lero- um, <laughs> uh, McLean, you know yeah. what I'm saying, Roe, it's like, shoot, it's a lot, it's uh-huh. a lot of guys out there, man. Yeah. So, but but I had I had a lot of fun, man. I've never been, you know what I'm saying, recognized mm-hmm. on that stage, yeah. you know, like that. You so, know? when you, um, <clears throat> a year or two, Okay, for you, Coach Saban is there, right? And y'all go seven and six. Y'all start the season off hot, right? But y'all, um, you end the season on a four game losing streak, yep. and you lose at home to UL Monroe. Yep. Okay. Talk me through year two, Coach Saban, kind of I guess trying to lay a foundation. Maybe some of the growing pains y'all experience as players of the team. Well, that season, man, we. Um, Coach Saban bringing in his guys and and stuff, but um, like we knew we was on the right track, and those games we lost was like fourth quarter, like close, you know what I'm saying, yeah. close games, and that Louisiana Monroe man, I think for real, for real, after losing that game, that was our turnaround, okay, right there, cause right. we didn't want that to ever happen mm-hmm, mm-hmm. no more, and I wasn't, I wasn't the start of it, okay, but. We could tell after that right there, it's like Coach Saban turned it up another mm-hmm. hundred notches. Mm-hmm. And we knew that next season, you go you gonna have to you're gonna have to deal with us. Like yeah. this won't happen. This won't yeah. happen again. All right. You know, and he he know how to trick the brain and get everybody on the same page and right. you know, how to talk to you, how to make how to get you going. Mm-hmm. You know, and he he was always good at that from having people come talk to us. And all of that, like, yeah. like he had Kobe and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Like he did the same yeah. stuff with us, and um, he know how to make you click because he he was what a psychology major. Yeah. So he he know how to brain work. I think it's amazing too, just um the stuff that I would see on the media, like when he would talk to the team, and it's not like he is like a lot of the to me. This is my interpretation. A lot of the stuff he's saying is like cliche, and it's not necessarily the most complex, right. I guess, concepts. But he put it in such a way that's so precise and like just on point that it's like it's hard to to you know believe it any other way. Year three, y'all go twelve and two. Yep. Um, you lose to Florida in the SEC championship and Utah in the Sugar Bowl. But of course, a, a way you know a bigger improvement than um, the prior season. Yep. Taught me through year three. Well, year three now that was my. That yeah. was probably my. Okay. They were probably my, my junior season. They were probably my best, my bet, my best season right there. But uh, like we were all on the same page. Like we held each other accountable. Uh, having like Rashad Johnson, Rolando McLean as you know, what I'm saying leaders on that defense. Like we really held each other accountable, and we felt like a more more comfortable in the defense. We could roam around, okay. you know what I'm saying? We had a had a Terrence Cody up front. He gonna yeah. take three yeah. blockers. Mm-hmm. So that was that that also helped us a lot. Like, cause I, my middle linebacker and Rolando and uh Rashad Johnson, man, they were some of the smartest guys 
I ever played football with. Like okay. they learned that playbook in and out like yeah. that. And um just going into that season, we knew it was it was it was gonna be it was gonna be different. Okay. And um and we didn't expect to lose. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um I wanna say that year we played I wanna say we played Georgia that year and I think we were the underdogs. And they had, I want to say they had the funeral, what the all black, okay. black out over there. <laughs> okay. And when we beat them, yeah, we knew everybody. You you finna have a hard time with us. Okay. And um, but the SEC championship, like the Florida, <clears throat> like they're probably the best football team I ever seen in my life. Florida, that yeah, Florida you team, got yeah. you got your Tebow's, you got your Percy Harvins, mm-hmm. you got your Dunlaps, you got your Major Wrights. You got your Hernandez's, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Man, they were. Lo- that, was pound, that a matchup pound. for you? Huh? Was that a matchup for you? Hernandez? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You had your Pouncey twins, man. They were Jenkins, man. They they were loaded, man. Yeah. I'd never seen a team that Cam was Cam was uh, even on that team. Yeah. Man, they were loaded, man. So, but uh, we came out a little short. I think we should have won, and we kind of had like a little penalty at the end that kind of set us back. So we could have got the ball back and won mm-hmm. and went and scored, but but that next year. Yeah. We came, we we came with it. So how did it? It just, um, I guess, to kind of segue a little bit. What was that like being able to play in some of those big games? Like you in Atlanta, it's rocking. Man, I would, I do four years of college again to do that yeah. to to do that again. Man, it wow. was it was electric. Like yeah. coming from a small town, mm-hmm. not knowing man, I'm finna play in front of a hundred thousand. Like I couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything else, man. I think college football is probably the, the best football. In the world, to me, yeah. you know, I, I watch agree. NFL, yeah. but uh, playing in Alabama, yeah, and playing in front of a hundred thousand with the fans behind you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it get a little rough, yeah. but like during that time, there wasn't no, <laughs> wasn't no rough patches. We were, yeah. we were going. So, yeah. but uh, man, I that's probably the funniest part of, of my life doing right. doing that right there. I, I imagine. I mean, um, <clears throat> but year four, year four is the year. Yeah, like that's the year. Yep. So. Man, tell me everything about year four. Like everything. I'm talking about from from spring to spring, you know, the whole process. Well, like coming off that Florida loss, knowing we could have went to the championship, you know what I'm saying? Knowing we were good enough, you know, we turned it up another we turned it up another notch. Okay. And like that defense, like we was we was prone on nobody crossed the fifty. Oh, across the 50, <laughs> we made, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? We didn't give up a lot of points, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That defense was, to me, yeah. that defense was the best defense to come through Alabama. <laughs> to to okay. me, you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. More teams I like probably, it, yeah. More teams probably had more talent than mm-hmm. us in depth, mm-hmm. but just that, that defense right there, yeah. man, I wow. don't think i seen no defense play together like we did and play off each other and take up for each other. You know what I'm saying? From from spring on, mm-hmm. if it was an injury, next guy came up and we filled him in. Yeah. And we um make sure he was up to par. Okay. You know what I'm saying? With communication, being accountable for you, make sure you're in the right place. Mm-hmm. We we never tried to we never tried to do somebody else's job. Mm-hmm. You know, we always did our job. As long mm-hmm. as we Coach Saban always told, do your job, mm-hmm. we we gonna we're gonna be good. And we all did it full speed. We ran yeah. to the ball all the time. And to me, that defense, that defense right there carried us to to the championship. Even okay. we had a we had a we had a good offense, but it was more pound oh, pound yeah. pound. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But defense was like nobody can score because yeah. we weren't scoring 40 points a game. Mm-hmm. So we can't yeah. we can't let it, we don't want nobody to score 14. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. so we trying to we we trying to take you out right okay. now. Yeah. You know, first <laughs> second quarter. We, we don't want it to be no game. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't. You, we don't want you to play it. You. We want you to be scared to play us again. Mm-hmm. That was that was the whole thing with Coach Saban. Like make them not want to play you no more. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's how we that's how we approach that season. Nobody want to play us no more. When so um, you speak a lot about accountability. When did so like okay, maybe there was an outlier. I know Coach Saban talked about. He talks about that often. Yeah. How did y'all deal with those guys? Guys who who weren't necessarily want to get with the program, you know? Well, I can say I was kind of, you know what I'm saying, one of those one of those guys, you know, I, I was young then. Mm-hmm. And you know, you got you got your you got your 
your stars, you know what I'm saying, and Coach yeah. Saban expect them, you know what I'm saying, to make sure everything right. You know, if I ain't practicing hard, you know, Coach Saban expect those leaders to get on your get on your butt. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes you don't know how to take that because you yeah. think you young, yeah. and you think I'm a man, and I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm grown. You talk to me that type mm-hmm. of way, yeah. but but everybody starts to. You know what I'm saying? Catch on, you know. Yeah. And we'll pull each other to the side. I ain't gonna lie, we probably we'll probably get to fighting and yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we respected yeah. each other at the end. Yeah. You know, and um like like I talk about Rashad and Roe a lot, cause they they made they made us they made us go on okay. on defense, man. Yeah. And um if you weren't doing the right thing, those guys was on your butt. Mm-hmm. You know. They me and Roe had plenty of scuffles in practice, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Shoot, me and Rashad had plenty of talks. Like yeah. he was an old guy. He yeah. he he used to he used to sit me down, you know what I'm saying, talk to him. Yeah. But um yeah, we have we sometimes it would handle a little rough, but sometimes we you know we can sit each other down and have respect for each other and let them know what we what we trying to do. You yeah. know? And um that was that was our thing. We weren't trying to disrespect nobody, but if it had to get if it had to go there, it had to go there. For sure. You know, and Coach Saban was <laughs> He, he was cool. fine. He yeah. was fine with it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you he, he know how to get done. Year uh in throughout the course of that year, um, <clears throat> what were some, I guess, like some of the most memorable moments, adversity, the highs, the lows, like maybe like all right, you know, halftime of a game, we like, ah, we kind of up against the ropes, you know. Um the one that come out the most is Tennessee game. Mm-hmm. Man, because what, what we played Tennessee fifth game, uh, almost toward the end of the season, and we, our mind, our mind set on championship. Mm-hmm. It's it's set on championship. Yeah. Shoot, and what I say, what was it? We were what Tennessee was down what two uh-huh. or something like that. This is the block, right? The, the block. block. Okay. So, and we called the fire zone. I don't know why Coach Smart called it, mm-hmm. but we called the fire zone. Had Marcel on the tight end. Okay. And they catch it like <laughs> right there in field goal uh, range, yeah. man. And man, I'm sitting here thinking like, oh, it yeah, can't, exactly. we can't, we put so much yeah. work in, it can't go like this. Yeah. But man, Terrence Cody, I'm talking that the biggest human being probably I ever saw in my life, man. Mm-hmm. When he ran through there and, and blocked and blocked that kick, man, I was, yeah. man, I was so uh, happy, yeah. man. And if he wouldn't have blocked it, Julio would have blocked it because okay. Julio had jumped up so high, uh-huh. and I think he would have blocked it okay. if he didn't. But that game right there, and I even thought we were gonna get a penalty because at the at the block that Terrence Cody took the helmet off, yeah, yeah, and threw yeah, it. Yeah, remember, so, yeah. but we kind of escaped that. Okay. And another one was <laughs> uh, Auburn game, last game of the season of that championship season. Okay. We were shoot first court, first half. Shoot, I want to say we were down twenty one. 21 nothing. Okay. But yeah. It was it was I think it was 21 nothing or we were down 14. Okay. But we came, we fought, we fought, man. Greg and uh Greg fought back, our quarterback mm-hmm. got us back in the game, man. Defense start start playing together because Auburn back then it was a lot of trick plays going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Like yeah. you weren't finna run straight at us and, and beat us. Exactly. Like with normal stuff. Yeah. So they threw a lot of trick stuff at us early in the game, but it kind of ran out. Yeah. You know, so we we battled, battled, battled. Shoot, last play, um, what Roy Upchurch hit in the flats. We drove the ball down the field, hit Roy Upchurch in the flat, won the game. Yeah. Yeah. They I got another that. chance, but uh-huh. we knocked it down. Yeah. I and that. um came out on top. Now we're going to the SEC championship. All right. Now that year in the SEC championship, who did y'all have? Florida again. Florida again. Okay. Yep. Now now this the rematch. So yep. How was that? You know what I'm saying? What was the mindset going into that game? You know, talking we're not, about that. We're not losing. Not losing. We we not losing we're not losing in them okay. anymore. Like, yeah. like, man, we Coach Saban drew some stuff up, man. We didn't run too many plays in, in that. Cause they used to rock and sweep all the time. Okay. And so we we Coach Saban was doing a little something on defense to where they didn't understand what he was doing. Okay. And it kind of frustrated Tebow. He mm-hmm. know what was going on. Right. And that offense was like electric that game. Like yeah. they were scoring points. Yeah. And we were we was playing defense. Uh-huh. And it all it all came together. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have no stupid penalties or nothing like that. We all played together, played hard. But it wasn't no way they were gonna beat us that game, man. We were so mm-hmm. up. We were so up for that game. It, it was crazy. 
Did you know that y'all was like creating this hate around y'all at the time? Well, at the time we wasn't like how it is now. We well, didn't think it, we were doing it. Well, I'm gonna tell you this though, just from my perspective, I remember posting what they wanted y'all to lose that game too. Yeah, well, it's in the heat of the moment, you know. Being yeah. at the uh, you know folks' house and um, like tailgating and stuff, they was like, they folks would count y'all out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was the wrong team. To count out, man. <laughs> but like Coach uh, Saber had us so locked in, man. We ain't too much listening to outside noise. Okay. He ain't, he ain't let you do unless you was a senior, junior. He ain't, he ain't let you do too much. You know what I'm saying? Too many interviews. Okay. And um, like social media just wasn't popping mm-hmm. like then. So you you yeah, wasn't thinking it. about the outside noise. Yeah. Oh, you 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 tunnel vision on the game. Right. And um, we were we were super. We were super, we knew we were gonna win the game. Yeah. We we were super locked in, even though them them boys were they were they were yeah. talented, yeah. you know what I'm saying. But we came in, we came and hit them in the mouth like pretty hard. Yeah. And 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 Tebow, he probably the best player I ever, one of the best players I ever played against. Okay. But he just he couldn't get going. Mm-hmm. You know, we yeah. had pressure on him, and uh, that defense, whatever what we was running, it it had them all all mm-hmm. messed up. So. So that year, you know. Uh, just after y'all win that SEC championship game, you know you're heading to the to the BCS. Yeah. How is like what's the preparation period like, and um, what is that like being able to go into that moment, especially in your final year, I believe. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a it's a lot of. I feel like after beating Florida, we we felt like we got over the hump. Okay. Like even though we still turned it up a notch. Yeah. Like when we going to the going to the Rose Bowl, we feel like if we beat Florida. Ain't nobody else gonna beat us because they they were they were talented, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, but we approached we approached that week like like that Florida week, mm-hmm. like it was it was tunnel vision. For sure. Like we practiced hard. Like I can remember in Rose Bowl where um one of our defensive linemen, Scott defensive lineman, kept sacking the quarterback over there on the other field. Mm-hmm. So they jumped on him. Okay. So we Whole defense <laughs> ran over there. And we we got the we got the bumping over there. So okay. we were we were locked okay. in, yeah. ready to go. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we we couldn't wait to play that game. Even though I don't think we played our best our best game, we played we played we played real good on defense. Yeah, but we really couldn't generate no points that game. But that offense kept grinding, kept grinding, and 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 we we pulled it out. Okay, and this is that year y'all had Texas, Texas, Texas. yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and so how was that experience and like that delayed gratification? Like you done been through coaching changes, been putting in all this work over these years, each year, you know, just on pace, getting better and better. When you were able to experience that in your final year of college, like how did that feel? And it felt like I, it, that's the reason I came there. Mm-hmm. For, all, for all that right there, you know what I'm saying? To grow, yeah. you know, as a person, to grow as a team and see see the progress yeah i think that's the reason you know what i'm saying i went i went to alabama and um i say like especially with coach saber he really taught us how to be how to be men you know he wasn't the most you know what i'm saying talkative you know what i'm saying person when it comes to like sitting you down and yeah. doing all that but you could tell he he loved his players by how hard he he coached you yeah and holding you accountable as of in you getting in trouble you're gonna pay you're gonna pay for it not not no kick off the team mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Send you back to no. He go he gonna try to get you right. Yeah. Himself. You yeah. know what I'm saying. Whatever he got to put you through. Yeah. You might want to go home by mm-hmm. what he finna put you through. Mm-hmm. But you know he could have sent plenty of players back home for messing up. Mm-hmm. But um, he kept he kept us there and you know what I'm saying try to make us successful. You know and, yeah. a, and a lot of guys ended up being successful. Right. They could have been back at home in the street. Yeah. You know stuff like that. But uh, he didn't. He didn't let that happen. He gave us all the resources to get better, you know. And um, I, I can't thank him enough, you know. Yeah. Coach Saban, man, he was, he was sure he was like my dad, my like my daddy, you yeah. know. So yeah. I can't, I can't. Yeah, thank I know. Him enough. See, a lot of people, you know, love him. A lot of people hate him. But yeah. you know, I, I agree. I think, I think if you really know ball, you can tell by how he coaches that he got a specific love for his player. Yeah. And so, like, <clears throat> you come back though, you get back to Tuscaloosa, the spring semester, you know, following your, um, or I guess you like coming on the cusp of your exodus in college football. What is that period looking like for you as far as training, NFL draft preparation? Um, are you like, where are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, what yeah. does that look like? Well, me personally, I probably should have 
left my junior year because that was my best year. Okay. I say my senior year, I didn't play as well. Okay. But um, I was still one of the, um, probably one of the top senior safeties coming out, probably top 10 okay. in senior safeties, but that's a, you know what I'm saying, that's a lot of safety. You got other players, you got to draft yeah. in between. <laughs> but uh, I, had, I had a couple, you know what I'm saying, character, I wouldn't say character issues, but I had some issues like drug tests and stuff like that going um, going into it. Okay. And uh, But I still got selected to go to the combine, okay. played in the Shrine Bowl. I trained at Exos. It was Dr. Andrews Institute. Okay. When I when I came out, was it you in know, Phoenix? No, it was in Pensacola. Okay. And um, oh, Dr. Andrews. Okay, I know that. Yeah. So I got a chance to go to the combine, went to Bears for a uh, free agency. Okay. You know, they they picked me up, gave me a chance. Okay. And uh, that didn't work out, and so happened I got drafted again in baseball. baseball. Yeah. So that was my my other way, you know. Um, but then. Got baseball, got in trouble again, and I'm like, ah, why well, I keep, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. you know, messing it up. Yeah. But when it when it come down to it, I look at it now, and I don't think that what he want me to, wanted me to be doing. Right, right, I think right. he wanted me to be doing what you doing this. Now? This is yeah. what I'm doing now. So yeah. I can tell kids, like, you ain't got to do that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You can do it a whole another way. Yeah. You know. So that's why I try to do now, man. Yeah. Just pour back in the community <clears throat> and shoot. Let the man handle the rest mm-hmm. of it. I like that too, um, because uh, I think, I think sometimes, and and I, I'm gonna ask you this, but I think at times, like when when we be them pour so much into the game, and we don't necessarily see the return that we would like, it kind of toys with a lot of guys' heads and mental spaces and stuff. Oh, yeah, it did. So yeah, tell me. Yeah, it, yeah, it did. It did with me, especially when I got suspended. The, um, where even when when I didn't get drafted, uh, I went free agent. I thought I was gonna get drafted. It yeah. it put me it put me in a different mindset. I was so comfortable at Alabama, like yeah. I didn't even want to go to the Bears yeah. camp because I was so comfortable. Yeah, there, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Seeing a new scenery kind of threw kind of threw me off, threw me yeah. for a loop. But um, that that right there, then get suspended for baseball. It kind of really threw me in into depression. You know, not yeah. knowing what to do at the, at the sports. And, um, I, Mike McCoy, um, he was training me cause I was still, after I got suspended, I got started getting ready again. Cause scouts wanted to see me again, throw okay. and try to let me back in the league. Okay. But, uh, Mike McCoy was training me. So, and then I got, I got some workouts. I got like five workouts, blue Jays, Rangers, and a couple more teams, but that didn't, that didn't work out. So, Mike gave me a chance at his gym. So I was doing some strength training stuff with him. I had a couple of classes I was doing with him. Okay. So he gave me my first chance at, you know what I'm saying, training. And um, then I started doing a little bit of baseball. Okay. And then I left, I left, um, I left Mike, me and Mike parted ways at the gym. So I just decided to start my own. And I started with one client, Okay. you know, I was training him on tennis court. Okay. And, um, so we go to the cages too. It was, it was a baseball baseball client name. Okay. Um, Hudson Park. Okay. He plays baseball at Broadwood. He's what 14, 15 now. Okay. And I still work with him yeah. to this day. But um, it was it was the it, it was depressing, man. Oh. My girl, my wife, she helped me out a whole lot. Like she worked her ass off while I was trying to get that started. So it wasn't yeah. a lot of money coming in. So yeah. she was she was doing all the work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So while I'm trying to build mm-hmm. build this and mm-hmm. now so it's it's going it's going mm-hmm. well, you know. I ain't I don't have a facility or nothing yet, but I'm you got me. Hey. Yeah, but I'm yeah. I'm I'm cool with that because I'm I'm I, I love working with, with kids, man. I the money aspect, it don't like I do a lot of stuff for free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, when I was coming up, yeah. you know. But um the money thing wasn't a big thing. I played in front of hundred thousand. I went. Tr- I barely even go on visits with kids. I don't even go take kids on visits. So. And that's something I noticed too. I'm like, man, as much as you do, and like, kind of how you work behind the scenes, you don't really, yeah, you care about the limelight. Yeah, no, nah, I don't. I I think I always been like that since I was, I was, since I was little. Okay. Like I didn't. Too much. I just like to play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now I just want to see the kid be successful. Like I played in front of hundred thousand. Yeah. 
I didn't live my dream. Mm-hmm. Almost, you know what I'm saying? And I'd rather see them and their parents enjoy that experience instead of me, you yeah. know what I'm saying, going to do all that. Because I don't think that's what I'm I'm here for. Okay. You know? Now, if a coach called me and said, man, bring a kid up here, yeah, I, I, I'll do that. But I'm, it, I just feel like that's for the parents and for them to enjoy. Yeah. Because me, I'm not trying to live through the kid. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to show them the right stuff to do. Right. But when he get to college, so it won't be no shell shock. Like I try to teach him as much as you can, like on yeah. the college level, right, right, right. you know, because in high school, sometimes you don't get all those concepts and all this stuff, what they teach you in college. Right. So a lot of kids, you see kids now, you got the transfer portal. Yeah. So <clears throat> when you don't know that stuff right there, now you're not the starter no more. Mm. You're not the man no more. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because you're not that you're not a good athlete, athlete, no. athleticism don't matter no more. Mm-hmm. You got to, you got to, you got to know football now. Yeah. And uh, now guys, guys, they'll leave they're, just because you sitting on the bench, but it ain't nothing wrong with waiting your turn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I waited mine. Like yeah. Tyron Matthews say, I, I sat behind mm-hmm. Pat P and yeah. all them guys, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But I, we love the grind. It's okay. just, it's different now, but the money involved, but we just, we love the grind to go get the money yeah. in, the, in the NFL. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we ate Roman noodles and, Stuff like that in college, but yeah, we we wasn't complaining about it. Uh-huh. Like we we were cool with that. Okay. We had a we had enough, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We ain't got what these kids got now, but we just we just love that grind, and I just I just love doing what I do, man. I've been doing it almost ten years now. Got a lot of guys in college. Got a couple guys in the NFL. Never thought, you know what I'm saying, that'll happen. Yeah, but um, I just I just love these kids, man, and just tell them what how to how to do it right, what yeah. not to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's what I get a howl for right there. Okay. Here. And um, you know, I think that I think, yeah, I think that your the role that you play is like great. And I love to see, you know, your material. I'll be on Instagram scrolling, seeing guys, you know, get work in with you. And <clears throat> is that a part of, I guess, how why you're why you teach the way that you teach, because you want to, I guess, Get guys in the mindset of like, okay, this is how a college athlete is supposed to think. Yeah, because I, I want I want to open the open the brain up, you know what I'm saying, to details that in college you like you are already you mm-hmm. already know. You'll be ahead you know? of the curve. Yeah, yeah, like like Dylan, like Malachi. I think Malachi was my first guy to go to Bama, mm-hmm. but I had Malachi since ninth grade. Okay. So when he got into that defense, it was it was nothing. Mm-hmm. Like he knew it. He 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 understood that stuff. Like that's like exactly he had been there. That's exactly why he yeah. was a true freshman. Yeah, too. he was a true freshman starter. Like, like Malachi, good athlete up here. He's he's a smart kid. You okay. know? But we used to go over those different techniques and stuff like that. So he just he just fell in. Okay. You know, and he worked his butt off. Like he earned that. Yeah. Well, he, whatever he, whatever he get whatever he get he earned all that. He okay. been he been working his ass off since ninth grade. Yeah. And he he's something like he the proof in the pudding, man. Mm-hmm. Like. Do the right stuff, man. You can, you know what I'm saying? Have have a, a great career at the University of Alabama or <laughs> whatever college you go to. For sure. So who are just to um name a few, like, because I also wanna, I do wanna, this is what this you this is about you, man. I wanna uh show people who you are and what you do. Who are a few of the big name athletes, or not even big name, but just some of the athletes that you've worked with, and if they have a big name, you know, they got a big name. Um I work with uh, you know, Malachi. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kool Aid McKinstry. I work with Chris Davis, played at Auburn. Yeah. Um, I work with Bradbury, James Bradbury, uh, Terry Arnold, Tony Mitchell, uh, Tevis and TJ Metcalf, uh, Dale Miller at North Carolina. Um, man, this is man, it's 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 a lot. Yeah. Uh, Marlon Humphreys. I work with him a couple times. Um. Shoot, it's a, it's a lot, and I know I'm, I know I'm missing mm-hmm. something. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, George Steele, who finna come out now. Um, my boy Fred, that's coming out now. Uh, man, it's a, it's a lot of guys. I don't, I don't want to miss nobody, but mm-hmm. I know, yeah. I know I am. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's in Bakwe. Um, yeah, it's a. Okay. It's a good bit of guys, and now I um I also go down on Fridays. Well, I was going down on Friday for spring start. I've been working with the whole yeah, Alabama secondary, 
Mm-hmm. So the coaches, they let me come in and do my thing. So, okay. but I've been going up there for up there to Bama since Malachi been there mm-hmm. and work work with it, working with those guys. Sure. So that's a that's a blessing, you know, yeah. to do that. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you too. <clears throat> well, like your coach, he he didn't retire. It's a new new regime, man. Oh yeah. What we think? Um, what I think about the retirement or the new Both. the new. Both. Uh, well, the retirement kind of hit me, kind of caught too. me, kind of caught me yeah. off guard. I, th- I okay. just knew he was gonna give me two more at least. Okay. But I can understand it, man. Coach Saban a different breed. He don't. He think a little different. He he more old school, you know. He more let's let's work for it. I ain't just finna give you nothing, you know. So when all the NIL deal, I feel like, and that stuff came in, and all people asking about his money, I feel like they kind of threw him off. He can't use his philosophy, you know what I'm saying, to like really get in the kid's head and yeah. make him successful because now it's a, it's a money thing. Like, how much money I'm going to get? Yeah. When we was playing, it was all about rings. Yeah. We wasn't, we didn't care about really the money, yeah. you know. We was, we want to win, we want to win rings. Yeah. And that was our mindset. That's how he had us programmed, like winning rings. But, um, the new the new staff, um, I met the D B coaches and mm-hmm. already, you know, I know I played um Freddie left before I came into Bama. So I know Freddie. Yeah, Freddie yeah. was my strength coach when I was there too. Okay. When I one of my strength coaches. And uh but I met the two new D B coaches. I really ain't got to meet the boy. Okay. But it's a it's a nice vibe out there, man. Okay. They playing music during practice. Okay. Energy always up, you okay. know. And um I think they made a, a real good hire. Okay. I think he gon I wouldn't say surprise some people because he had Washington without even the players that Alabama got. Okay. And he took them to the national championship. So okay. with these players, I think he can he gonna do the, the same thing, you know. And okay. even though Coach Saban got some big shoes to fill, yeah, he's still there. He has an office, I wanna say, in the stadium. Yeah. So he's still gonna be helping out. So they still gonna be picking his brain. So okay. I don't think it'll be too big of a change. It's just the vibe different. Mm-hmm. You know, he coached more way more laid back. Yeah. Probably more of a player's coach. Okay. Coach Saban by business, he by winning in between the lines. So right, right, right. that's probably I say the only difference. And he got a real he put a real good staff together. Okay. So but I think I I don't think it'll change. I okay. think Alabama's still gonna be Alabama. All right. There it is. I man, look, I really appreciate you coming on the show and like giving me, you know, the, the perspective. Um shout your shout what you do out all in one training. Uh, what is it? Um who are you know? What what do you do? Well, I'm I'm all in one training, and the reason I named it all in one is because uh, I do baseball and football, so I decided decided to combine them together. So I do hitting, pitching, fielding, and for football I train defensive backs. And uh, follow me on All in One Training Academy on Instagram, and hit me up whenever you need some work. Yeah, and I also plug that in the in the video. But um, like I said, I appreciate you for coming on, man. Appreciate it's you. Pleasure man. having you. Pleasure. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we can continue to get guests like here. And of course, we want to get some of them Alabama guys on here. Y'all tap in with the Modest Sports Show. Just like that. If you made it this far in the episode, I appreciate you. Be sure to like. What was your favorite part of the episode, too? Drop that in the comments. Subscribe. Share the video around. And of course, stay modest.